Thank you for choosing to listen to this message by our pastor, Brother Mike Beachy. Let us join now with the saints of God with open hearts and minds into a service already in progress. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You have heard of little Moses in the bulrush. You have heard of fearless David and his slain. You have heard the story told of dreaming Joseph and of Jonah and the whale you often sing. There are many, many others through the Bible. I should like to meet them all, I do declare. By and by the Lord will surely let us meet them at that meeting in the air. There is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. Skeptics will be absent on that day. There will be no grumblers present to disturb us, and the Akins will be busy far away. There the saints will have this seal upon their foreheads, dressed in raiment none but ransomed ones can wear. All who have the wedding garments will be present at that meeting in the end. There is going to be a meeting in the end, in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there. That home beyond the 
Lord a hand. Try to see. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day. still there is a healer his love is deeper than the sea his mercy is unfailing his arms a fortress for the weak let faith arise let faith arise I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart, these things I remember You are faithful, God, forever Be still there is a river that flows from Calvary's tree, a fountain for the thirsty. It's your grace, it washes over me. Let faith arise, let faith arise. I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart, these things I remember You are faithful, God, forever Let faith arise, let faith arise Open my eyes, open my eyes, let faith arise, let faith arise, open my eyes, open my eyes. 
I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart, these things I remember You are faithful God forever I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart, these things I remember You are faithful God forever Praise the Lord. All right. I guess next we'll get the uh, Grace Kids to come up. They got a couple of songs to sing. So let's give them a hand.
for an answer, a ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? Where is our rescue? There is someone, he's the answer, he's the light and he'll light the way. His name is Jesus, and he came to save us.
God, my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me, he died at Calvary. By God's word, at last my sin I Stand 
come against the king. Nobody can. No one can. Nobody will. No one will. Praise the Lord. Yeah, only through Jesus can we have victory. You know, I was thinking back there, like, that's the only way. That's the only way. The only way to heaven. The only way to victory. The true victory in this world. Because really in this world, even though you may be successful, you may have everything, but if you don't have Jesus, you're defeated at the end. You have nothing. You have absolutely nothing. Because you were nothing from the beginning. But with Jesus in your heart, you have everything. You have everything. You have victory. I just praise the Lord for that. Amen. All right. Well, I guess next we'll get the uh, uh, the youth choir. Yeah, youth choir to come up, and we're going to sing a couple of songs for you, and, and then we'll change the order of service. Let's give them a hand. Children of God 
Leave it all behind Leave it all behind Leave it all behind Leave it all behind I have what you need But you keep on searching I've done all the work But you keep on working Running on empty And you can't find a remedy Just come to the well You can spend your whole life Chasing what's missing With that empty inside It just ain't gonna listen When nothing can satisfy and the world leaves you high and dry Just come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find what their souls long for The world will try, but it can never fail heart no matter how broken just come as you are when your last prayer was spoken just rest in my arms a while and you feel the change my child cause you come to the well and all who thirst will thirst no search will find what their souls long for the world will try when it can never fail so leave it all behind come to the well
Amen. Can you give the Lord a hand? Amen. Do we have something to thank him for tonight? Amen. I believe we've got something to thank you for. Song says, you woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. How do we know that? Because I woke up thanking Jesus. Amen. I I still woke up recognizing that he is still Lord of my life. Amen. So I woke up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. Amen. And and, and I had a desire to to come to church, to his house tonight. Amen. Amen. To fellowship with his people around his work in his presence. Amen. So we've we've got so much to thank him for. Amen. It's such a wonderful thing to be able to come and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ain't it great to be able to get together with God's people? Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm glad there's still, God still got some people. Amen. I mean, how many believe he's still got some people? Amen. Amen. He's got some people, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Amen. It's a wonderful privilege. Amen. It's an honor, and it's so good to be back here. appreciate all of you coming out. And this first night of camp meeting, and as you've seen, uh, have you enjoyed the young people tonight? Amen. 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 Amen, if they blessed you. Amen. We appreciate so much the young people. And you can be seated. And I thought maybe tonight, maybe we'll just get a, a, a testimony or two. Is that all right? Somebody might get excited. Who knows? Somebody might just get fired up and preach at us a little bit. It's all right with me. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, that's all right. Amen. We just want... You know, to come together to worship the Lord, no formalities, just, just to let God have his way. That's what we're trying to do, amen, is it, to let God have his way. And, and we maybe we've had a little bit singing, just a little bit long, but I wanted to give the young people an opportunity tonight to share in word and testimony there and song and, and, uh, and what the Lord is doing in their life. And, and I see them progressing. I see more and more of them uh, uh, picking up different things, picking up keyboards and different things and singing and so, you know, appreciate that there, amen, that they would use their talents for the Lord. You know, we go out here and, and get on America's Got Talent and whoever's got talent. I'm glad to know the Lord's got some talent. Amen. amen. I, I believe the Lord's got some talent. And you know what? He anoints his talent. You know, they might not, sometimes you might not sing like a nightingale, but when God puts his presence on, I tell you what, it doesn't really matter, does it? Amen. I, I, I love it when people sing from the heart. I, I, I do enjoy that. I, I love it when people sing from the heart. When it's not just to put on a show, but it's, it's something that's heartfelt and to the Lord. Amen. That's what David did. Amen. And over there on the backside there, watching the sheep, and he, he just began to play on that harp and begin to make melody in his heart and worship God. And because of it, God was with him. Amen. God was with him. I don't know about you, but I need God with me. I need him with me. I'm in bad, bad trouble, you know. Without him, I get enough trouble, you know, when he's on my side, you know, when I got him, you know. But, boy, what would it be if I didn't have him? Boy, I tell you what, uh, it, it, it'd be quite a mess. And I know some of you probably think it's quite a mess as it is. But be, be, be thankful, amen. Be thankful, amen. It's so good to have you here. And it's going to get Brother Richard to come up. Uh, Brother Melvin's son-in-law, he, he drove them up here, come up with them so they wouldn't be there by themselves. I, I want to give him an opportunity to just share with you a little bit. He, he works with Brother Melvin down there, and I guess kind of, I guess you pastor the church, don't you? Thank you, Pastor. Blessings to you. <laughs> just take, take your time. Do you want a handheld or? Oh, I don't know. All right. I speak kind of loud anyhow, so that's okay. Praise God. Amen. Well, it's just a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm excited to see all the youth that's here this evening serving the Lord. You know, uh, we need the youth in our nation. You know, us older folk are getting older and may will soon be passed on. And the, the torch needs to be passed to them that they might let their light shine to a crooked and perverse generation. And, you know, it's so important tonight that you let your light shine and not be afraid or be embarrassed about doing that. And, you know, there's so much going on. So I encourage you just to continue to keep trucking on. Hallelujah. Well, it's just great to be here tonight. This is my first time to be able to speak in Georgia. I've passed through the state a couple times, but uh, this is my first time here tonight. I was in uh, Brother Rob's church here several years ago in North Carolina, hallelujah, up there. 
But it's just a, a blessing to be here. We're just so thankful for the goodness of the Lord and His blessings on our lives. Uh, safe trip coming up. We had a good trip. Lots of rain. We need rain down there. Praise God. Um, I'll try to take some of it back with me when I go. Hallelujah. But anyhow, but yeah, uh, we're just thankful for the things that the Lord are doing in our area down there and in Mexico as uh, things have been getting kind of rough. But, you know, we just keep going and we keep trucking and that's what we do. That's our ministry. And I shared this with people before. I said, you know, a policeman goes into a riot at risk to his life. They're losing. I said, a fireman goes into a, a fire at risk to their life to take care of the fire. I said, we do missions work. We go into some rough places, but that's what we do. It's at our job. And, you know, until the Lord takes us home, that's just how it is. We're going to continue to fight the fight of good faith. Hallelujah. We're just so thankful for what the Lord is doing. Uh, we've been working with a couple down there in church. Uh, they built a, a new mission. Oh, it might have been in the newsletter sent out. Uh, in August, the first thing in August, we're going to go down and, and we're going to have a dedication service, dedica dedicate the new mission. It's doing very well. And we went down, I think it was the second week in May, I believe it was. We had a, a baptismal. We had nine people baptized and we had one dedication in the new mission. So we're excited about that. And one of the young ladies that was baptized, uh, we was down there this last summer and we had a vacation Bible school and, and uh, these two teenage girls come in. We stand in the back back there and, and uh, they said, is it okay if we come up and, and be a part of the, of, the, of the deals you're doing? I said, yeah, sure, that's fine. They said, you know, it's for the smaller kids, but if you want to come in, come up. Well, in the process of time, they received the Lord as their Savior. So that was, a, that was a, a worthwhile deal to see that happen. We were so excited. And one of these girls was one that was baptized there uh, the, the second week of May. Hallelujah. And so we're just excited to see that happening and the things are going on. And we're just looking forward to be able to go back down in August and be able to um, be a part of the festivities that they're going to have in the dedication of the mission down there. And it's doing very well. I'm, I'm really, we're really happy and ecstatic how things are happening, how the Lord is blessing the lives down there. Praise God. And we're just so thankful what that being on the border and the things that are, are going on there. We're just so thankful. The Lord is with us. He's continued to protect us and keep us. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things going on. You know, we try to stay away from the hot spots because we know that there's things are there. But once in a while, things kind of come close to us. But I'm thankful so far that we've not had any problems. We've not had any trouble with, with the things that have been happening. And we talked to some people over there that have seen things happen and have been struggling with some things. But praise God. God is so good. Amen. Amen. We're so blessed. We're so blessed to be a part of America. And, you know, when I, when I go over there and I, and I see the things that they have and the things they struggle with, and, and, you know, we have so much and they have so little. You know, and so when we go, we always like to try to take a blessing over when we go. Praise God to bless them. And, you know, I'll just share this here. Most of us kids, we have backpacks. We don't think much about a backpack, you know, a mochila, a backpack. Don't think much about it, but for them, it, it, it's a livelihood, especially for the people in the mountains, because uh, when they go up and down the hills or whatever, they're packing rope, they're packing bottles of water. Sometimes they may put a pair of pants and shirt and things in. If something happens there somewhere, they need it. So that backpack to them is a necessity. It's something that, that they really want and need. And, you know, I just, I bought one, didn't think anything about it. Yeah, I'm going to just use it, I'll put my stuff in it and go. But for those folks over there, yeah, it is so important that they have one. So when we go, we usually try to buy a couple and take them down and bless someone down there with a backpack that we don't think is really <laughs> any big deal. So, you know, it's just, just things like that that we do to try to help, and of course, propagating the gospel. That's, that's the key to being a blessing to uh, those that are there, praise God, and, and be able to then. I'm just so thankful that I'm a part of the family of God. I'm a part of your family here. Uh, but again, I just want to say God bless you all. And I'm just privileged to be here with you tonight and to uh, just worship the Lord with you this evening. And I just pray that God will con continue to bless you, youth, hallelujah, in your endeavors to serve Him and to walk with Him. I just encourage you to continue to fight a, a good faith, hallelujah, that you might lay hold of eternal life. Amen. Praise God. And I just thank Yes. Yes, yeah, he, he was just, he was seen us here, what, just before we left, I think, Dr. Renner come over, oh yeah, he's in and out, and uh, still taking rice in, still working, still hammering away, praise God, yeah, still doing a good work, and things over there, yeah, so we're just so happy to be um, laboring with Dr. Rayner too, and Brother Rob knows him, he's went down there, this, his clinic and things he has, so, hallelujah, and he's still going to the interior, taking stuff in, helping people that can't afford medical uh, 
uh, working things on their bodies, whatever, they may, whatever it may be, he's able to do that. He, if we can take medicine in, he tries to take care of that. So, yeah, he's still, he's still plugging along. Amen. Blessing, blessing the lives of people. Praise God. So I just want to thank Pastor Beachy for this opportunity to be able to share here tonight. And praise God. God bless you all this evening. Amen. <laughs> No, that's that's a, a report from the front lines. You might say he's kind of Richard and uh, the wife is kind of picking up where Brother Melvin is having to leave off a little bit. Brother Melvin ain't quite as young as he used to be. He's younger than most of us, but he's he's not quite as young as he used to be. And uh, and so it, you know they're picking up uh, with some of those things. And you know we might take it for granted, but as he's saying there. It's been a while since we've been down there, but even right there in the border towns, a lot of the places we went, I mean, they've, they've in the last few years have been pretty bad. They have cowboys and Indians for real down there, you know. They, they have shootouts right across the border. I mean, you know, places where we was in there eating tacos, Brother Rob, you know, off the taco stands and stuff. Now you might have to dodge some bullets to get one, you know. But uh, it just, you kind of think about those things, and it's kind of like, you know, Maybe I feel a leading to go somewhere else this year, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as the brother said, you know, he said, you know, it, it's just what we do. It's like the firefighters and the policemen and these different ones, they got a job to do, you know. And God gives you a job to do, you got a job to do, you know. And you just have to go in trusting the Lord. And you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you get hurt. You know, sometimes we think, well, I'm doing the Lord's work. Ain't nothing going to happen. And that's not true. Sometimes things happen. But you know what? He'll still be with you. That's the beautiful part about it. He'll, he'll bring you. I would much rather go down on the battlefield for the Lord than just doing something for myself. You know, I'd much rather go down fighting, you know, fighting the good fight. I'd, I'd much rather have that to my credit and than just to be sitting around doing nothing. You know, I, I, I want to I do something. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord will find so doing, doing. And, you know, I think about that there. Even Jesus said, my father works, hitherto I work. It's part of his nature. It's part of his nature, you know. Talking to a gentleman today and, and saying that's a lot of the problem in the age that we're living in. People, they don't know what that word is, means, work. You know, they need some demonstration, you know. Well, what is that? You know, that, that, we thought that was in that four-letter word category. You know, that was one of the things we don't use. And, uh, but it, it won't kill you. Sometimes you think it's going to, but it won't. You know, it's good for you, you know. And uh, it's better to work than not to work. Amen. The Bible says, if you don't work, you don't eat. That's the Word of God. Don't work, you don't eat. I'm going to keep working myself. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, y'all are going to join me, ain't you? Hey, Amen. Jeff, come up and say something for the Lord. Well, I'm honored to be here tonight. This is my first Georgia camp meeting. Uh, for y'all who don't know me, my name is Jeff Chapman. Uh, I was incarcerated in Georgia State Penitentiary for 10 years for my foolishness. And, uh, you know, just a minute ago I was sitting thinking that, uh, that Jesus is a robber too. <laughs> he robbed the grave of its victory. Amen. <laughs> he, <laughs> he robbed death of its sting. And so... I felt like we had something in common to some extent, <laughs> to some extent, and I'm not, you know, in any way glorifying that. But I, I'm certainly thankful to be here tonight with y'all. Uh, I don't in any way glorify my past life, but I'm certainly thankful that God allowed me to experience some things. Uh, I'm very blessed to be able to be a part of a family of God that loved the Lord. And uh, I love y'all very much, and uh, I'm thankful. You know, I know where I could have been. I should be dead. 
should be dead, and I'm thankful that God, in His mercy, looked down and saved my soul. And uh, I love y'all, and, and I appreciate every one of y'all. God bless y'all. Appreciate Brother Jeff. We, uh, Jeff was down here at River Bend, and, and it was one of them that was there that we always looked forward to seeing because Jeff always had a smile on his face, you know, and coming to the services. And, and there's several of them like that. that you know, you, you know that they've, they've really trying to make that effort to serve the Lord, you know. Everyone that comes to the chapel don't come for that reason. They have all kind of reasons for coming. But uh, there are some. There are a few. And, you know, that's what makes it worthwhile. I, I, I wish Brother Scott was here tonight. I'd love to have him up here. Maybe we can get him to say a word before this camp meeting's over. But the uh, Lord has blessed him. He's doing well. And, and uh, he's, he's come out of the system. And, and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's working. He's uh, got him a place to live now. And, and he's, you know, and he's doing well. And, and, and we see that, you know. And so it's not all loss, you know. It's not all loss. You know, you just you keep on. And, and, and the Lord has blessed Brother Jeff. You know, he's been up there with Brother Rob and them. And they got him a beautiful little wife. And they got a baby on the way. And they got him a, new, got him a job. Got him a new truck while I was up there. I got jealous. I'm like, my goodness, man. These boys, I tell you what. You know? But that's the blessings of the Lord. I think it's so wonderful, you know. It just does my heart good to see the Lord bless them. And they're, they go on and try to serve the Lord, you know. And, you know, who, who knows what the You know, and sometimes God allows people to go through things. Brother Jeff can relate to people that I can't relate to. There's others here that's had problems. They've come off of drugs and things. And God has delivered them. You know what? They can relate to people that I can't relate to. You know, there's alcoholics. People have been delivered from alcohol. They can relate where I can't. There's a lot of those things God spared me from, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. But, you know, but then on the other hand, and it's just like, you know, I heard tonight a, a request for prayer. A sister was saying something about somebody lost their, their, their child. See, there's people here that can relate to that. They feel that hurt. They, they, they know what that's like, see? They know what that's like, see? I, you know, I've lost some close, but, you know, there's certain things I can't. I can say, you know, hey, you know, we're praying for you. I know what you feel. But, you know, unless you've been there, you really don't know. You know, so sometimes God allows things, and, and he'll bring you through those things. And, you know, we can, we can take things, and we can become bitter, and we can just, you know, uh, just really get mad at God. Or we can begin to see what God can do through the process and we'll find ourselves in a place that, you know what, we can reach out and help others because we can feel those infirmities. I say, God, the Bible says we have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And he knows each pain that we go through. I believe he knows the pain. We say, well, you know, even the Heavenly Father, he, he lost his son. But I believe that even Jesus Christ, he can relate in the sense of even the withdrawals of the drug addiction. You say, how can that be? Because there are those that have committed his life, their life to Christ. He is coming and he has indwelt them. And he is in high priest. And he can feel. He knows that their withdrawal that that drug addict is feeling when he comes off of that. I believe he knows that. I believe he feels that. Not because he partook of it as to his body, but because he indwells those that have his children that have committed their life to him. I believe he feels their infirmities. I believe he knows everything. And you know what? The Bible says he cares. He cares. That's the beautiful thing about it. He cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about uh, our loneliness. He cares about the, the grief. He cares about the hurt. He cares about the pain. He cares about each and everything. And it, down to each and every individual. He cares. He cares. And it's so wonderful. And then when you see people turn and use that gift. Use that gift. A man told me about a little girl the other day. She's on YouTube. Yeah, she, and he was talking about her singing and how he, he let his little girls see it because it was such an inspiration. And this little girl, maybe she's nine years old now. But her, her mother died of cancer. She was only three or four years old. And her mother loved gospel music. She loved Amazing Grace. And her daddy got her in the closet and got her singing. 
and begin to post her on, on YouTube. And now, I mean, it's just thousands and thousands of views. And she's been on 2020. She's, you know, just becoming famous because of it. But she, she's got a heart for it. She said, you know, I believe that God has called me to this, to, to sing. And she's just a little girl. But she puts her heart in it and she sings with that inspiration. Out of that grief of her mother, out of that there passing and that process and things, part of that grieving, now she is turning her talent and using it for God and to inspire others. It's just amazing. You know, and it's amazing what God will do with us if we'll just let him. If we'll just let him. If we'll just uh, back up and just allow him to use. And, and sometimes it's the hurt. Sometimes it's the pain. Sometimes it's the scars. You know, that God will use to mold and to shape us into what he wants us to be. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's so encouraging to hear uh, even Jeff, our, our brother's testimony saying, you know, God allowed me to do this process so he could mold me, so he could shape me, so, you know, I can, I can come closer to him. Because, you know, would Jeff be serving the Lord today had it not been for that incident? Maybe like he said, maybe he wouldn't even be here. But see, it, this it was a process that led Jeff to follow Christ, to come to Christ. And God's mercies are great. He, he reaches so far, he goes to such great lengths and such extent to save my soul, to save your soul, you know? And, you know, no wonder he, he encourages us to have mercy, to reach out, to lend a hand, to, to, to reach out to the hurting and to those that are, are you know, maybe struggling. Sometimes people are struggling. Sometimes it's your neighbor. Sometimes it's your brother, your sister, your family. Sometimes it's those right there with you. Sometimes we don't even know it, do we? Sometimes there'll be someone right in the midst of you, and they're struggling and they're hurting, and we don't even know it. Ask God for a caring heart, for a heart to love, for a heart to understand, for a heart to, you know, reach out. And uh, so anyhow, it's such a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, I wasn't going to preach to you tonight. I was just, just taking a little bit of liberty here. It's, all right. Amen. There was, there was some, actually, there were some others I was planning on calling up that, that didn't show up. So I guess we won't call them. They'll have to just take a rain check. And, uh, but it's so good to see you, every one of you. How about Brother Chuck? Can I get Brother Chuck to say something for the Lord? Not from even from way back there. Brother Chuck is such a wonderful inspiration. Can I send you a microphone, Brother Chuck? Brother Chuck is such a help. He's, he's, oh, for many, many years, he's labored in the gospel. And he's another one of those that, boy, you'd love to share in his crown, amen, share in his crown. But there are those that are working with us that's laboring in the gospel and trying to go on to do something for the Lord. Brother Terry, come up here and say something for the Lord. I thought I'd broadside him there just a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate Brother Terry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, now this reminds me of the prison, a full house. Amen. And I thank the Lord, you know, I thank the Lord for camp meeting time and uh, getting my heart back to slow down a little bit. I do this on Wednesday night, but I don't get used to it. But I thank the Lord. You know, this has been a trying week for me. And, uh, you know, the, I, just the devil just trying to steal my joy at camp meeting time. And I'm like, I'm going to defeat that. You know, just, and it's my fault. It's my fault. Where does our problems come from? We like to point our finger and blame other folks, but when we look in the mirror, there's where it started. And I'm like, you know, because that's what the Lord shared with me. And I'm like, amen, he's right. So I'm not, I'm not going to dispute it. He said it was me, it's me, amen. But, uh, you know, you have to just learn to be an overcomer. And one of my, my trials was I was doing a job. It took me two days longer than it should have. And to show you, you know, you never know the people's state of mind. But this house was, you know, I agreed, you clean it out, I'll paint it. Well, they made an effort. But, you know, it took me two days longer. We got down to the last day. Well, next to the last day, I had to go back up and finish up. But they, they did clean out one room. They, and they even moved the furniture for me. I was supposed to do that. And I'm like, well, praise the Lord. You know, but on my last day of finishing up this job, I got to talking to the folks. And his dad was a minister, and we got to talking a little bit. 
and uh, I found out that they had lost a son a few years ago, you know? And the problem was they just haven't overcome that yet. And that was their problem. And I was thinking, you know, what's wrong with these folks? They, they, don't, they don't pick up. They don't clean up. They, you know, they just move from one place to the next. And it's just a mess from here to yonder. But see, I never knew that. And I would have went in knowing that would have had a different outlook on him. And I'd have been a larger effort in helping, which I did. I had to move it to paint. But, uh, you know, they were happy when we left. But, you know, I just thank God sometimes that, uh, you know, that he lets us, you know, just find those things out, take a different outlook on how people, people's problems are in their lives. And that's what we have to look at because everybody's going through something at times. But, uh, and we never know. So I learned a good lesson there. But the Lord is good. And I'm glad to see everybody here tonight and uh, full house. And I hope that uh, you keep coming. I hope that the uh, rain stops for a little while. <laughs> but but uh, I've enjoyed the rain. We need the rain. Amen. And, uh, and I enjoy being here at church and, and the prayers. I love the brother here. I think we've got a great brotherhood. It's kind of scattered out. But, uh, you know, I love him. You know, I agree with you, Brother Jeff. I mean, he's... He's got the biggest records because look at all these people he stole from Satan. Amen. <laughs> just stole them right out of his grasp. Because I'll tell you what, Satan had me for a long time and I was just going, just doing my thing and serving the devil. I mean, you say, well, no, Brother Terry, I wasn't I wouldn't serving the devil. Yes, you were. You were either serving God or you were serving the devil. You don't like it. I didn't like it. When I thought about it, I didn't like it. But that's exactly what you're doing. If you're not serving Christ, you're serving Satan. So, and it's, it's not never too late to turn around. And he's always there with open arms. He's standing right out there in the shadows, waiting on you. And the devil's over there laughing at you. So if you're like me, you don't like to be laughed at. Amen. Praise the Lord. So y'all, I love y'all tonight. Y'all give Jesus a hand. Amen. I'm with you, Brother Terry. I ain't going to let the devil steal my joy. Amen. Like you say, you know, we, we look and the... Things will happen, you know. Oh, you just get tore up on the inside, you know. And the devil tries to steal your joy, you know. But you know what? We're going to defeat him. Amen. We're going to have the joy of the Lord because it's my strength. Amen. Brother Abraham, I'm going to come say something for the Lord. Amen. Appreciate these brethren. <laughs> Many of these brethren work with us in the prison ministry, and we just appreciate each and every one of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. I want to uh, thank God for His uh, goodness and His mercy that uh, endured forever. And, uh, and uh, this week, we worked on this. I want to share a little bit these things. Uh, we work in this house at uh, um, in Loganville. And... Uh, those elect uh, electrician, I think, I think the owner, the, the owner of the house, they want to the transfer the light in the bathroom, and these guys, this electrician, uh, the 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 guy that we work work work, work working with, he told us that this electrician was scared, went went up to the attic. He said there's a tons of uh, bad. <laughs> and he, he was scared on the bed. So I will not I will not come I will not come back until this bed uh, uh read away or, or they, they need to do some things, he said. And the the guy said, Oh I can't I can't I can't believe it, that that bat is just fell down in his front. <laughs> he was scared. <laughs> and he said so the uh, uh, the 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 they called the uh, what do we call this uh, those people uh, peace yes peace control and then this guy said uh, this bat uh, they are protected he said uh, if you kill bat they will they, you will lose your license yes he said and and they will they will uh, you, 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 you will pay us like 25000 something like that. And they said, they, Jeff said, it's crazy because uh, we know in, in, in our country, they kill the babies. 
they they kill babies and it's 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 crooked uh, uh, crooked uh, government you know we remember that they they will they will it's okay to abort baby inside the womb but it's not okay to kill a bat it's crazy it's 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 very dangerous world we have but thank god because we know that we, we serve a living god we serve a living god and i thank the lord because uh, uh we know the the word of god is very true that this world is uh, the the try to make the crooked straight but thank god because we know that the word of the lord is is uh, teaching us and guiding us in the right way i thank the lord because it's the lord is so good for us that we uh, we are here tonight to serve the, uh, to encourage one another exhort one another in the word of the lord and that's one thing i know that uh, things like this we can we can be encouraged and we can be uh, uh, encouraged to to one another amen and the lord is so good so anyway the the space control they they came i think yesterday and then they spread and then those bad is just uh, the, the owner of the house city is watching then 15 seconds and then the bus is one fly away going out in the house <laughs> so probably those electrician come up in uh fix the slide but it's the lord is so good god is so mer merciful to us amen so uh, let's just pray for this uh, crooked government that the, the lord will open their understanding and their hearts that they might receive the lord jesus christ as their lord and savior amen, amen. thank the lord for all the for you all guys uh, brothers and sisters tonight and and uh, we love you all in jesus name amen, amen. tell you sometimes those little animals they uh they might not hurt you they'll make you hurt yourself <laughs> uh, i i happened to be up on a 24 foot ladder a few days ago myself and uh i spotted him in the vent and i was trying to work around him but he come out and i almost went off <laughs> uh, i tell you they can they can make you do things that you wouldn't do Man, Steve, how about come up and say something? Yeah, Beachy, yeah, Steve Beachy. Yeah, that one over there. much for crowds, uh, <clears throat> but it's good to be here, uh, love the Lord, uh, um, I appreciate the opportunity to do something for the Lord, uh, uh, like I say, when you don't come up here much, you just, you don't, it don't work very good, <laughs> but uh, uh Glad to see everybody here. Glad to see Brother Melvin, Richard, and them here from Texas, and uh, everybody else that's here. We uh, trust the Lord to give us a good camp meeting. Believe He will, and uh, y'all just pray that we'll do God's will. Thank you. You know, I don't know sometimes, I, I, I tell my brothers, I, I think what happened was is they, I don't know if they just uh, rejected their call or, or, or pushed that aside or what happened, you know. I, I, I remember picking up a, a tape and uh, Brother George says, Steve, how about you come up here and speak tonight? This was back under the Army tent. <laughs> that was back in 1969 or 1970, 71, you know. And uh, I don't know if he, he run from it from then, so he said, I'll do something else. I'll run the press. But uh, and it, him and Dwight, it's hard to get much out of them when it comes to talking. But 
I have to say, I'm so thankful for them, though, because we get a lot of work out of them. They ain't they, they men of few words, but they, they, they do a lot uh, for the ministry and for the cause of the gospel. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. Amen. It's so wonderful. It's wonderful when you have family and you have brothers. And we have so many that, you know, are laboring together to try to do something for the Lord. And I'm so thankful to have each and every one of you here. And uh, being the first, I'm not going to keep you tonight, but uh, we just, there again, we're so thankful. We also, I think, they have some refreshments after church. Is that right? Just, mm, they're somewhere in here. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sister Christine's probably taking care of things now. Right. Hey, Brother James and Sister Christine has been such a wonderful help. And, uh, and Sister Shirley and the others that work with her. And, and then tomorrow we'll be having dinner out here uh, around 1 o'clock, and they, they're kind of doing something uh, maybe a little special. They're going to have some different tables tomorrow. There's going to be some, uh, of course, we're going to have some southern food. There's always fried chicken, you know, we can't, and, uh, but then I think we're going to maybe have a little bit of oriental. We're going to have an oriental table. We're going to have a, a Spanish table, and uh, we're even going to have an Amish table. Uh, some of the girls went up and got an Amish cookbook and eat some of the Amish food. Now, let me tell you about Amish food. It ain't necessarily going to make you healthy, and it might even make you fat, but it is good. <laughs> you know? So, they believe in eating starches with starches on top of the starches and then put some gravy on top. And uh, so, anyhow, they, they, it, their food ain't fancy, but uh, I tell you what, it'll stick to the ribs. And uh, But we just have a little bit of variety and things. We'll have some things out here for the children, and, and I think the rain's supposed to taper down just a little bit, so hopefully the uh, Lord will work with us on that. I believe He will. And then the rest of the week, and then let's prepare our hearts, and we'll be having services tomorrow night. We have different ones here. Brother Rob's here. Brother Jesse and them will be coming in, I believe, tomorrow maybe, and then uh, Brother Melvin's here with us. Matter of fact, he's got a friend from over in Atlanta who's wanting to come over, and, and so there, there'll be different ones here, and I, I, I could tell people well, the main thing is is not so much the vessel that he's using, but the one that's using it. Main thing is that God will speak, and I, I I believe in this principle. Number one, I believe in the Word of God. Amen. When when LS fails, we can go back to the Word of God, and uh, I was talking about that the other day. And but the Bible tells us that if we hunger and thirst after righteousness. We shall be filled. Amen. That's a promise. Amen. That's a promise. That, to me, that ain't... See, I'm going to relieve the preacher to have a little bit of uh, responsibility. To me, that don't depend on the preacher. It don't depend on the singer, the song leader. It don't depend on the person next to you. It depends on one thing. That's you. Hallelujah. And if I come and I hunger and I thirst, if they don't get up and do nothing but read John 3, 16, I'm going to get something. God's going to speak to me. I believe that. You know, so I encourage you, come with an expectation. Just come expecting something. You know, let's get excited about the Word. Amen. I love to see people get excited about the Word. I, I use the analogy a lot of times, but I, I've got a few animals on my, my little farm. You know, I, I, I ain't much of a farmer, but I've got a few animals. And one thing I'll find out about animals, they like to eat. They like to eat, and they're going to eat. It don't matter whether the rest of them eat or not. Now, I ain't telling you to act like beasts, but, you know, they got their mindset. They're going to eat. If there's going to be some food, they're going to get some of it. But you know what? We need to be that way about God. David said, Lord, my heart panteth after thee like the heart, like the deer does the water brook. That's getting a hunger and a thirst. And that's the way we should be for the things of God. For why? It said in the last days, there's going to be a famine, not for God's word, but for a hearing of the word of God. There's a famine for it. People don't have a desire. We've been filled up with everything else. We've, we're just like children. We've got full-on junk food. We've eaten candy bars and cookies and cakes, and, and mama set the table, and we just really ain't hungry you know what, if we can just set all that aside and begin to, you know, I, I hear Brother Young, we have, we have brother, uh, a Brother Young uh, from up in Gainesville, and he's over 90 years old now, about 93 years old. 
And he begins to talk about the Brush Harbor meetings and, and, and the old times. I mean, he, they, they went to, to church in the horse and buggy, and they weren't Amish. <laughs> that, that was how far back they go, you know? But they, they, I mean, but there was such a hunger. There was such an enthusiasm. You ever thought about that? How great it would be, you know, to see God moving that way and, and a revival? I don't know about you, but I'm praying and I'm, I'm trusting. It's like my generation. I'm saying, God, stir my generation. Let there be a revival. Let something come alive. And I believe that it will. We're just going to do like Ezekiel did. And I like that there valley of dry bones over there because Ezekiel, you know, he looked out there. God said, you know, look at this here, Ezekiel. What do you see? There's a valley of dry bones. You know what? In this world we're looking at today, what do you see? A valley of dry bones. God said, can they live again? I believe they can. Amen? Why? Because he gave us an example right there, and I can go back to his word, and I say, you know what? You did it once. He can do it again. He said, Lord, thou knowest. Ezekiel wasn't real sure. Man, this looks pretty dead. But you know what I always think about? Where were you? Where was I? Where was I? You know, when God got a hold of my heart, when he got a hold of your heart, what was you doing? What was your mindset? Where was you going? What did you have planned? So if he can get a hold of me and he can get a hold of you, you know what? I think there is some hope for this generation. But you know what? It may take someone to intercede a little bit. It may need someone to get on their knees and ring the parabells of heaven. Amen. We should have got excited right there. We need to get a desire to see people saved. We need a desire to see the lost come to Christ. And quit worrying about whether they come to my doctrine, to my church, or to my way of thinking, and come to Christ. Because that's what matters. That's what matters. We need to get soul salvation in our heart. I don't know about you, but I read what Paul said, and he said, my heart. He said, this is my family. This is my people. I grew up with them. You know what? I see the same thing today. And you know what? It weighs. You know what? I just keep praying because you know what? If Just like it was with Ezekiel when he's, Lord, thou knowest, he said, you prophesy. And I say it over and over again. But you know what? I'm going to keep saying. I'm going to keep prophesying. I'm going to keep preaching. And we're going to keep praying. And we're going to keep seeing God move if it takes one by one by one. One thing I've seen, I've seen him take my generation that stepped out of church, stepped out of God's will, and I've seen him reach down and begin to deal with their children. Children that was not even raised in church, that all they know is what their hypocritical parents, the life that they live. And you know what? I see God dealing with them. And I just got word there's one wanting to get baptized now. The Bible says heaven rejoices when just one soul. He just went so. Brother Richard was excited. He said, there was, what, nine or so was baptized. Oh, you was like, what, well, nine, you know? Well, how many have you baptized? You know? Sometimes maybe we'll hear of these churches. Maybe there was hundreds, you know? That's great. But what about one? I get excited. I get uh, reports from Africa. The pastors over there, they keep sending me. When we had a revival over here this weekend, we had services, good sir. There was... Several people come to the Lord. There were three of them baptized. Say, praise God, hallelujah. You know? Keep on fighting the good fight. Let's don't give up. Amen? Let's don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Let's claim it for God. Let's claim it for God. And let's stand on those promises. Let's pray those children back into the place with God that they need to be. Instead of pointing fingers, instead of saying, well, I knew they, you know, I knew. Yeah, I knew too. And I know if it hadn't been for the mercies of God, I would have been out there right in the middle because I was a wretch. 
You was a wretch. Yeah, I was a wretch. Don't kid yourself, you was too. Sometimes people still are because they, that's the reason they think that way. Don't ever think you was too good. You know, God, he, he picked you because you was a good one. All of your righteousness wasn't nothing but filthy rags. It was a stench in the sight of God. We haven't done anything to merit God's grace. It was because of His grace. It's because of His love. It's because of His mercy. Amen. Because of Him. Amen. So let's, let's keep Him in prayer. Let's keep holding it up. Amen. Keep ringing those prayer bells. I want to see a revival. I want to see God move in our generation. Amen. I want to see God move in our generation. I'm going to keep believing to that end. I'm going to keep believing to that end. That's what I'm going to believe for. You know what? If I believe for that and you join me and you believe for that, if I thought one could put a thousand, two could put ten, you know what? If I can get about a dozen of you here to believe that, well, why am I? We just tear down the walls of Satan, won't we? We just tear, go ahead and tear his kingdom down. Man, set the captive free. Because that's what Jesus is here for, is to set the captive free. There's only freedom in Christ. There's only freedom in Christ. Satan, he offers all kinds of things. He says it's freedom. It ain't freedom. The only freedom there is is in the spirit of Christ and his love. Amen. Can we stand together? Maybe we'll just sing a chorus together as I say, appreciate once again coming. Let's just sing that course he paid a debt. We'll let you go. Because truly, Jesus Christ paid the debt. Had it not been, you know, for what he done. thought of what, what Jeff said. Oh, Brother Rob, you know, he said about Jesus. Robin, he said he actually went to hell for that. <laughs> but he came back up. That's the beautiful part about it. That's still that same message that the apostles gave their life for. It was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There are many other gods, there's many other religions, and they got people that died, but they ain't got anyone that came back. Amen. They ain't got anyone that came back. Amen. No one has what we've got. Amen. No one has it. Because of him. He paid a debt. He did not owe. And I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone. To wash my sins away. And now I. A brand new song, amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt, and not oh, I owe the debt that I could not pay. I need someone to wash my sins away. God, he paid that debt. Amen.